risk. Uh, risk is an interesting thing. Um, there's two kinds of risk. One is a risk that is actual. It's a risk where you're actually balancing um, things that are in the physical sense of being physical human beings, right? And the others are perceived risk that we make up and we make them up out of fear. The majority of how we experience risk now on this planet is imaginary risk. It's fear that we make up and we've been making them up more and more and more. And the more we make up risk out of fear, the more our focus of our perceived risk becomes a bigger thing. And when it becomes a bigger thing in actuality, then we fear it more and then we make it a bigger risk. So we are creating a lot of the disharmony that's on the planet through our conscious thoughts. So be mindful of number one, not contributing to those fears. And number two, um, try to, whenever you can, just be that voice of reason in a, in a soft way, suggesting to others that I don't know that that would be something that we need to be afraid of, okay? When I was in Iceland uh, a, a couple of years ago, one of the things I was amazed about was that uh, the government doesn't care if you fall off a cliff and you die. And there are beautiful cliffs and there's beautiful nature and nothing is roped off. There's no warning signs. Um, sometimes you, you could be standing on, on, a, on a ledge that the rocks just kind of crumble in, underneath your feet. Like you can die, right? And there's no railings. You can just die. But what's so nice is like everybody's at peace. No one's like, oh, where's the government? Does anybody know that I could slip here? Or did anybody see the water spill? Or does anybody see that there's an actual cliff here and I could fall off the cliff? You know, no one's asking for the government to make everything completely safeguarded. It's a natural world and exploring the natural world is a blast. Now, here's the interesting thing. So is it a risk? Yes, there are real risks, okay? Now, when I was um, when I was at some of the most gorgeous high places in Iceland, um, the people I was traveling with, they would go right to the edge of, of those cliffs. And I was uncomfortable when they would do that. I, I wanted them to just step back even though I didn't, I wasn't begging for railings to be cemented in, the, the visual illusion of the railings, I guess, would make me feel a little bit more comfortable for my loved ones, I can't help it. But what's really interesting is, that's an actual risk. It's not a made up fear, right? If, you, if those rocks fall out from underneath your feet, then you will fall and you will die, right? But how much of it is, is actual of the things that we're afraid of, right? Uh, I'm afraid of my child who just got a driver's license. Um, I'm afraid of him being hit by a drunk driver. That's not real. You made it up because you heard of it happening to someone. And the more people worry about it and the more people put energy to it, the more it's gonna happen. Everything that we focus on expands and expands and expands. I remember when my first kid learned how to drive and I knew they were going to be home at like midnight or something. And now this is post 9-11, so I've already got the whole guides and intuition thing. So I know how to calm myself down. So I'm waiting and waiting for the garage door and I'm imagining, now I got three kids with a big span between them. So I got a lot of years of waiting for the garage door to go open and make sure that my kids in safely when they're driving or they have their, their car. And on the very first night that I started to do this, I said, you know what, uh, here's, how, here's what I choose instead. I'm going to choose to be happy because if God forbid anything did happen, I got, the rest of the time after an event 
to deal with it? Why do I have to deal with an imaginary event that hasn't even happened and will never happen? And so sure enough, kid after kid after kid learned how to drive and came home safely, learned how to drive and came home safely, learned how to drive and came home safely. And I slept at night. I slept. The only time I was ever woken up by a, a driving kid in the middle of the night was um, if they were, if somebody else drove them and that person was no longer fit to drive them home. Or my kids are all in their beds and I get a text from a friend that they're too drunk to drive. And then I get up in the middle of the night and I go pick them up. But there was nothing to be afraid of. And I didn't give up my happy moments for something in my imagination that just didn't happen. Yes, things happen, but they don't happen nearly as often as we think they will happen. So that's the point. Risk is primarily in our imaginations. So deal with what's real, that you gotta deal with. But the rest of the stuff, let it go. If you're finding yourself focusing on things to worry about that haven't happened, find ways to flip it around 180 degrees and replace it with a happy thought. Find a happy thought to replace those that make you worry. Find a happy thought to make replace those that make you worry. Find a happy thought to focus on, which will push out the worry that you had had. And it's interesting, but this not only makes your life better and gains you so much more joy and happiness in your own life, but it actually makes the whole planet better. Because if you remove yourself from the collective fear, the whole planet becomes less fear-based. So you're literally doing your part by reducing the amount of time you're willing to perceive risk and make up things to be afraid of.